Well, good evening, church. I hope you're doing well. Been praying for you and praying that you're doing well. Um, those who I've spoken to seem to be uh, doing well during this time. And so uh, just uh, continue to have faith in what God is doing. I wanted to gather together this evening just as we normally meet at 7 o'clock on Wednesday evenings. Uh, I just wanted to have a short Bible study with you to, to once again encourage you uh, and for us an opportunity to be together uh, around the Word of God. And so I'm looking forward to this. Hopefully you have been as well. Um, as we get started, let me go ahead and pray for us. Uh, Father, we thank you for this opportunity. Uh, Lord, the technology that you have given to us, that even though that we are isolated from one another physically, Lord, that we are not spiritually isolated from one another. Lord, we are come together around your word. We know that you are here amongst us, uh, the church that is gathered. Father, we just pray that you would use this time for your glory and, Lord, for our edification. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, just a few words. I uh, want to go back to to First Peter, uh, kind of give you a few words of encouragement. I know I just touched my nose. I'm not supposed to do that. <laughs> but, uh, old habits die hard, right? Um, anyway, uh, just shows the the fallibility of all of us. Um, going back to First Peter, uh, wanted to just to take another look at First Peter. Uh, we the Sunday we uh, spoke out of First Peter. If you have not seen that video, I encourage you to do that. Um, but uh, Peter, once again, he, to kind of give you an update and, and, and get you up to speed if you didn't watch the video, he's speaking to the exiled church members, to those who have been scattered because of persecution. And uh, they're out in different areas, living in different, uh, different places. Um, they're in isolation, if you will. They're all from Jerusalem. These people came from Jerusalem, the church in Jerusalem. And when persecution happened, uh, they scattered. And they became impromptu missionaries to go out into all the different places of Asia Minor in the Roman provinces there. First uh, Peter chapter 1, verse 1 can give you more information on that. They're called the dispersion of the exiles, uh, those exiled in the dispersion, the saints uh, that are scattered abroad. And so here they are. They're in a different, different place, different uh, way of doing things, their families, their jobs, their homes, everything that they... Uh, we're familiar with is now left behind, and now they're kind of having to start over. We're not in quite the same scenario, but at the same time, this is a new era. This is a new way of life that, uh, as Americans, uh, we're just not used to. We're not used to this um, social distancing. Uh, we're not used to pandemics uh, being rampant in this country. We've heard of uh, Ebola and th different things, other places around the world. But as far as uh, something affecting our daily lives, this is new for us. So what, is, what does Peter have to say uh, to the churches um, that are there out there? So he's kind of getting in, in this part of the, the, the chapter, chapter 1, uh, verse 13, is where we're going to be at this evening. Um, and Peter's kind of getting into the meat of what it means to be the church um, in exile. So let's look at First uh, Peter chapter 1, verse 13. Uh, let me just read that verse for you. It says, Therefore, preparing your minds for action... And being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. I'm just going to look at this one verse here for just a few minutes and see what Peter has for us. What is he saying to the church that's dispersed and to us as well? He says, therefore, prepare your minds for action. Uh, some of your translations may say, gird up the loins of your heart or gird up the loins of your mind. Um, what does that mean? Uh, in those days, girding up the loins is talking about taking your toga and tucking it in. Um, so that way you can run, it frees your legs up. And so the, the translators of more modern translations have just cut to the chase of what that means, which means prepare. Prepare your minds for action. And so he's telling you, the church, prepare your minds for action. You're, you're in a new place. You're in a new situation, you're in a new scenario. Um, and here's what can happen to us is that we can just kind of uh, turn inward, um, shut down, if you will, and, and just kind of just ride the wave. Uh, we'll just ride this thing out and just see what happens and hopefully everything will turn out good on the other side. Well, as believers in Jesus Christ, um, we don't believe that way. That's not the way that we act. That's not the way that we live, that God has a plan for all things. God works throughout all things. He's doing something. God has a plan for this, and we want to be a part of what God is doing. And so um, what is it? we got to, we got to prepare our minds. How, how do we do that? How do we pre prepare our minds? First of all, we got to get our minds in the Word. Uh, where, is, where is God at? We know He's in His Word. Well, let's get into his word. Let's look and see what he has there. Words of encouragement, words of, uh, of, of, 
obedience that we can do, things that um, as we're separate from the church and separate from the world, we're in our own private spaces. And, and uh, that's sometimes where we're the worst. Uh, the real true us is being seen in those private spaces. And so what is Peter saying? Hey, look, Prepare your minds for action. Don't don't let your mind just drift and say, "Well, you know, we're not meeting together as a church, and and you know, and so therefore I don't have to, you know, getting into the Word or praying or doing those things, you know, the, the where we've put those on hold. No, we haven't. God has never put Bible study on hold. He's never put prayer on hold. He's never put acts of obedience to Jesus Christ on hold. Uh, this is where these things can be refined. Um, the one of the things that uh, a book that uh, maybe many of you have read, and if not, I encourage you uh, to read it. Maybe purchase it on Amazon and, and have it delivered here in the next couple of days. Um, the book, uh, let me get the thing, Experiencing God. Um, Experiencing God by Henry Blackaby. This is, a, like I say, this book, um, this book physically <laughs> is an old book. It's been around for quite a while. Um, and one of the main uh, points that, that Henry Blackaby has in this book is that no matter where you're at, no matter what's going on, God is working. He, he's doing something. Now, whether we see it or not, it depends on our spiritual sight. But God is working everywhere. He's working in the Sudan. He, he's working in the places um, that you would never think of, Iran, uh, the places where you think God is not even present because of Islam or because of whatever. God's working there. Do you know where he's working? Are you seeing where he's working? And that's what Peter is saying, that God is working in those places where you're at, in your family, uh, in your workplace, uh, whatever it is, whatever your scenario and situation is, God is doing something. And he has you here for this, this time. For such a time as this, God has placed you where you are. So prepare your mind for action. In other words, what does that mean? It means uh, be prepared uh, to give an answer. When people come and they say, well, man, I don't know why in the world, what is going on with this world? Uh, hey, there's there's a great um, uh, evangelistic tool called Three Circles. Three Circles. Uh, you can look it up on YouTube. Um, you can. There's an app that you can download onto your phone as an evangelistic tool. I encourage you to look that up and use that because it starts with the brokenness. It starts with the brokenness of this world. And when people say, man, this world is, is crazy right now, you can say, yes, it is. And here's the reason why sin is the reason why sin has come into this world and this world is turned upside down because of sin. But here's the thing is that God is the one who, who turns the world right side up. And he is the one who has created this world and sin has broken it. But guess what? He is restoring it and nothing can keep him from restoring it because he's the one who came to this world, who saved this world through his shed blood and he's restoring this world. And one day, one day all these things will be made right. So there's an opportunity to hear, preparing your mind for action, listening uh, for those gospel opportunities to uh, to share the gospel with people, even in the midst of brokenness. We don't have to have all the answers. I don't know why God, there again, has allowed this to take place. Um, I don't know. He's God, and if I could figure him out, then I would be God, right? Um, so he's bigger than I am. He knows what he's doing. Uh, he's protecting people. There are miracles taking place all over the world of people who are surviving this pandemic, um, and God is working in, in multiple ways. But we need to prepare our minds for action. There may be a simple action around you. Uh, I have not heard of any uh, situations where people are needing help. Uh, if I do, I will let you know. I will put out a phone blast. Um, but, but here's the thing is that you're the first line. Uh, you be the church. If a neighbor is in need and you can fulfill that need, you do it. Uh, if it's a bigger need than what you can do and you need the church's help, well, well let's, let's talk about that. But here's the thing. You don't, don't think of the church uh, of the gathered church, uh, the one who, who helps people. You are the church. You are the one that God has placed in that situation to help that person if you can. There again, uh, as a church, we want to help come along beside you. Um, you know, one of the things I want to stress as a church or as a pastor is, is that, hey, look, you know, I, I'm physically here by myself. Bill is coming in, uh, you know, every day for a season. We're kind of in and out. Um, but, you know, if you're looking to us to say, hey, come up with some great ideas of what we can do to, to help our community. You know, I, I'm limited by those that I'm around. I'm isolated as well. Um, so you look and see where God wants you to work 
And um, this is not something that we can just, you know, throw out an idea, vote on it in a business meeting and send a check. No, God has you. God wants to use you to bless you and to have you be a blessing to others. And so prepare your mind for what's going on. Just be open-minded. That's the second part of what he goes into. He says, being sober-minded. What is he talking about here? Is he talking about the, um, you know, the alcohol? No, he's just talking about being clear-minded, being clear-minded about this whole situation. Uh, there again, the preparing our minds for action, getting into God's word, being prayer warriors, um, you know, uh, reading a book, doing a Bible study, um, you know, spending this time. Don't waste this time. Don't waste this season that God has given to us to take away a lot of these uh, things in life that have taken up time in our lives. And God is uh, see this as a season of rest. Uh, the promised land, flowing with milk and honey, if you will. This is a season for God to say, hey, take a rest. Rest in me. Rest in Christ. Rest in him to know that, hey, he's got everything under control. He's doing what he's doing. You just rest in him. Prepare your mind for action um, and be sober-minded. Part of being sober-minded, uh, I believe what he's talking to the people that are there in um, uh, the dispersion in First Peter is he's saying, hey, look, you know, um, you're in a different world. Um, be aware of what's around you. Be aware. Be aware that there are dangers. Be aware that there are things you need to, uh, to avoid because he, he goes on later in verse 14. He says, as obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance. In other words, Peter's giving them a warning. Saying, look, there's going to be temple worship. There's going to be all kinds of uh, things that are out there that uh, that you were once a part of and you and Christ brought you out of. Don't go back to those things. There's a warning that's there. Be sober-minded. Listen to our government officials. Listen to those um, that are saying, don't go outside. Don't go to Walmart if you are uh, susceptible to, to sickness, uh, elderly. Um, call someone. Call someone, call, call me, call someone in the church uh, to help you to, to get things from the store for you. We will do that. That's, that's, be sober-minded about these things. Uh, I believe our government, as, uh, as, as fallen as it is, it has our best interests at heart in what it's doing during this time. So be sober-minded about these things. Um, listen to what the government is saying. Take those precautions and, and follow those precautions. And so that way, hopefully, this will uh, will pass quicker. That's, that's our goal. That's our, our prayer. Um, but be sober-minded about these things, um, you know, and, you know, there again, the going back to the spiritual aspect, uh, don't take a vacation. Don't take a vacation from, from Christ. Don't take a vacation from Bible study, uh, from prayer, from these things. Be sober-minded um, that God is doing something. He has you there for a purpose, uh, but be cautious. Um, you know, I know sometimes um, uh, we can be cynical. Um, sometimes some of the things we go, oh, well, come on, you know, another restriction, another day, another restriction. Um, hey, you know, <laughs> I... I'm in the same boat, um, and, and, and when I say that, I mean literally boat. Um, I've heard they're going to close down some boat ramps. That's going to hurt me. Right now, they're keeping them open, not that I'm fishing every day, um, but that is a good release for me uh, to get away, to go and, and be on the water and get away and, and just uh, relax and, and, and just to, to focus on God and, and fishing and um, prayer and those types of things, uh, be together with my wife on the river or my kids or whatever. Um, and man, when they hit, when they close the boat ramps, that's going to hit me hard. But you know what? I'm going to have to think sober-mindedly about it. Um, that the, there's the best interest of me at, at hand if people are, are not being responsible with their boating practices. Uh, the last thing there is you set, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And there again, what, what Peter is, is saying is saying, hey, look, God's in control. Um, we don't know how long this is going to last. We don't know the extent of this. We don't know all the answers, uh, the economy, um, what life will look like after this. We don't know who, who might contract this, uh, uh, this virus. Um, there may be some deaths among us. We don't know. But we have the hope that is in Jesus Christ. Live that hope. Speak that hope. Um, portray that hope. Uh, when you're talking to people, hey, man, you know, we do have a hope that is in Jesus Christ. That The worst case scenario is that you contract this virus and you die from it. But if you're in Christ, that is a best case scenario because now you're in the presence of Jesus Christ. And so, you know, set your hope fully 
on Christ and what he is doing and in his love for you and his care for you. And that should drive us to evangelism, drive us to sharing the gospel with those, write a letter, write an email, Skype, Zoom, whatever you can do with those that you're, you're one that you've been praying for. Use this as an opportunity to share the gospel with them. He is our hope. He is our only hope. Our hope is not in the CDC. It's not in ventilators or in N95 masks or toilet paper. Our hope is in Jesus Christ. Christ. Uh, those other things are necessary and those other things will be used uh, for the for the virus. But, um, you know, here's the thing is that our hope is in Jesus Christ and uh, and how you uh, how you sound uh, the, the the conversations that you give uh, during this time will reveal where your hope is or if you do have hope. Peter saying, hey, listen, uh, God's in this. And uh, there is hope. It's in Jesus Christ. He's got something he's doing. Let's take full advantage of this. Let's take full advantage of this time to prepare our minds for action, be sober-minded, and rest our hope in Jesus Christ. Let me pray for us. Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. Lord, we just pray for those who are suffering. We pray for those who are in the fields of medicine who are treating these. Lord, we just pray for your divine hand of protection over them. Lord, we pray for divine healing. Lord, we just pray that you would just continue to use us in this broken world and during this broken time, Lord, to advance your kingdom, Lord, to share your, the good news of your cross, of your death, burial, and resurrection, and of the salvation that we have in Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, good to see you. Hope to hear from you, and we will talk to you later. If nothing else, see you Sunday morning. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.